Welcome to tootsall.com. Previous episode was a theoretical introduction to Node.js. I explained its basics, where we should use it, and how a non-blocking I.O. model works. This episode will be more practice-oriented. We will install Node.js and create our first HTTP server. Let's download Node.js. To do it, we have to go to the official Node.js website, nodejs.org, and in a download section, we can choose installer for our platform. Once we run it, we can accept the license. The default location is uh, just fine for us. And here we, ha we have to choose components which we want to install. Obviously, we want a Node.js runtime. We also want NPM package manager, which will allow us to install uh, Node modules. And uh, we also want to add Node.js to the path, which will make it uh, available by default when we run the console. Once we click install, installing it takes just a couple of seconds. And here it is, we are ready to play with Node. We can open Node Interactive Shell, also known as REP, read eval print loop, by typing Node in a console. Once we are in the REPL, uh, we can run here any JavaScript. Uh, we can also write help, which will display available comments. We can assign values to variables. Uh, we can display uh, its values. We can also output some text to the console. This is good for some ad hoc coding when we want to verify something quickly, but this is definitely not the recommended way of writing JavaScript scripts. Let's go to our favorite text editor. In my case, it's RubyMine, which contains WebStorms. However, to use it, you have to buy a license. So if you want something free, I def definitely recommend the Notepad++, which you can download in a notepad-plus.org and uh, you can download it, as I said, for free. It's a very good editor to get started. Let's create our first Node.js application. I'll create a new file and call it hello.js. To continue the programming tradition, we just output the hello world text. Once we have it, let's save the script and let's come back to the console. First, we have to exit the REPL, and we can do it by double pressing Control c Now let's go to the location of our script, and we can run Node.js scripts by typing node and then a file name. Let's hit enter, and here it is. Our script ran and it outputted hello world text to the console. This is our first application, but it's not very exciting. So let's create something more complex. And I want to create a basic HTTP server. First thing we need to do is to include HTTP module. Now we can call create server function on it to create an HTTP server. As you can see, this function accepts two parameters, rec and res, which stands for request and response. Request contains, contains all information about requests from the HTTP client, and response will contain the output, which we will send back to the client. As a response, let's write first some headers, and we can use write head function for that. As a first argument, we have to send the HTTP status in our case, it will be 200, which means that the request was handled successfully. And we'll also specify the header content type and say that the response contains pl the plain text. We can also output some information to the browser uh, using write function.
Let's also use some properties of the rec parameter. One of those is URL. We can get URL from which the request came to us. And let's also output it. As you can see, in this case, I used end function instead of the write one. What it does, it not only adds text to the console, but also ends and sends the response. Once we have our server created, we have to specify the port on which we are listening. The first argument to the listen function is the port number, and the second one is the URL. I specify 127.0.0.1, which is our local machine. And the last thing we'll do is to outputting some text to the server console so that we know that the server started. Now we can save the script and we can run our server. We get the information that the server started. If we go to the browser and type the address together with the port, we can see the hello world text and the request URL, which in this case is just a slash. That's because we didn't add anything to our path. However, we can change it. If we type slash test, we see that the request URL is now different. This is a very simple example how in just a couple lines using Node.js we can write a working HTTP server. Let's come back to the Node Interactive shell. And there is one more thing I want to show you. We can access the process object, which outputs all information about Node.js process. There is many things which you don't really need to know right now. However, I want to show you couple properties which you may find useful. If you write process.pid, you can get the process ID of the node. You can get also the current directory of the process by typing process.cwd. If you want to change it, you can use chdir function and specify the new path or the relative path of the new directory you want to use. In this case, I will use two dots, which will make the current directory to be the parent of the previous one. As we see, the default directory changed. Another very interesting property is env, which will displace environment variables. To see versions of Node and V a JavaScript engine we are currently using. We can type process.versions. We can also change the title of the current window to the new title. And once I type enter, you will notice that the title of this window right here will change. And here it is. I showed you that we can exit the REPL uh, by double pressing Ctrl C, but another way to do it is to call process.exit function. That wraps up our second episode. We installed Node.js, we played with REPL, and we created a basic HTTP server. If you like my screencast, make sure you don't miss the next episode. Subscribe to the email newsletter, like us on Facebook, follow on Twitter, and share with friends. Thank you for watching. Thank you.